Hello, everybody. My name is Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This intro is way too long. Hello, good morning, happy Saturday. What a grand day. Good morning, one and all. All right, where do you want to start? Casablanca. Casablanca. Is it Casablanca or Casablanca? You say potato, I say potato. (laughs) Casablanca is what I'd say. All right, we watched a movie last night. Now, it's my second time watching it. However, it seemed like the first time. It was my first time ever watching Casablanca. Well, give me your synopsis, your thoughts. Give me your... Your um, review. I thought that it was a classic movie. Um, I would give it not an A+, but a definite A. um, Mm. Because it had romance, suspense, and mystery, intrigue. Uh, The amazing thing was there was no cussing, no nudity. Not much violence. There was a shooting, um, but it was very downplayed. Two shootings, but no blood. No blood. Very downplayed. Um, And it was interesting and intriguing from the minute you started to the very end. Why wouldn't you give it an A plus? Because it didn't have a lot of good special effects. and. (laughs) (laughs) It's an old movie. Uh, but I give it a solid, solid A, A, A. Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Berg, whatever, uh-huh. any Bergman. Uh-huh. It was it was great. I enjoyed it. I looked forward to it, and it was all I thought it'd be, plus more. So, yes, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Well, all right. Ingrid Bergman, I didn't realize how much of a beauty she was. She's just absolutely gorgeous. Did you notice her, just her features and her skin and all just seemed like it was perfect? Did you notice Well, it was that? in black and white, so it was hard for me to tell, but she looked average to me. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, she was pretty. Yeah, I thought she was, I thought she was, you know, you think back to, you think now of the way women are portrayed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and you look at the way she was portrayed. Mm-hmm. She was much more attractive mm-hmm. than the way they portray women mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Or the styles and all that stuff. Same, that's with everybody, I think. Same could be said about men, too. Okay. Well, I mean, you know. So we, just, So what you're saying is. We'd be all become fat and bald. and. <laughs> well, that's not how the, the, the people on the movies are portrayed. Oh, okay. You know. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, that era, I would rather live in. And then, of course, we've got the the next because we're going to watch. You know how we usually watch movies of genres or eras or people or whatever themes the case and stuff. Be, yes. Themes, yeah. So we're on uh, right now watching Humphrey Bogart movies, and the first one we watched, of course, was Castle But the next one is the Maltese Falcon. So that's going to be interesting. Who stars in it and what's it about? Well, now that I'm reading it, it may be that we go to High Sierra first, but written by... (laughs) uh, That's lovely. Also starring Mary Astor, Gladys George, Peter Laurie, uh, Ward Bond, and I'm not sure exactly what it's about, but we'll have to figure it out. All right. Uh, it's a crime scene. It's a crime about a jewel encrusted statue. Mm. So there's that another. Be good. There's another movie out that's you know in more recent time, isn't it called Maltese Falcon too? Or I'm thinking of something else. I'm All thinking right. the Snowman and the Falcon or something like that. I don't know. It's a more. Uh, re- it's a recent in yeah, our time I, movie. I think that's a Burt Reynolds, Jerry Lee Lewis movie. No, there's no. It's about spies or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have to look that All up. All right. But well, yeah. But that's that's the next one we're gonna see. Is the Maltese Falcon. So Sounds great. It should be great. Yeah, absolutely. What else is happening in your world? 
Nothing. Nothing. We get the camera. camera yeah, we got today. camera today. That's a highlight. Got some new toys and got some activities for him to do. Got that felt Christmas tree we put up. Activities. <laughs> I love that. Activities. Activities <laughs> for the two. You know what I was noticing? I, of course, it's it's that time of year when the weather changes, and the weather's changing. Of course, and we had our first little cold snap and. People are thinking, oh, my God, you know, it's already almost December, and we're just now having our first cold snap. Oh, my God, it's got to be global warming, all that crap, you know. Uh, I see that there's a lot of snow up in the northeast, and the northwest they are getting a lot of rain. And right now, we in the south, we've been in a drought. But I think this time last year, we were getting inundated with rain. And I just got, I always sit there and think about the weather and how they you know, it's gone from global warming to global freezing to how they've changed all the phrases and all. Mm -hmm. And I keep thinking back to a story. And this is a true story. This happened to us when I was a kid. You know, I'm not a big snow skier. I'm from the South, but we had a big trip planned to some, some friends of my family that were going to take several of us kids in a group out to go skiing out in uh, Colorado one year. So we planned to go to Colorado and it was going to be big. Oh, we were looking so much forward to it. Well, come to the, find out that they had no snow in Colorado that year. Absolutely. How can you have no snow, snow in Colorado in the I'm skiing season? You. I'm not the kidding hell? you. I'm not kidding you. There was no snow. So they changed it over and we were going to go to Vermont to go skiing. And about three weeks before, I mean, they had snow. They had snow, by gosh. About three weeks before, it started warming up and it started raining. And all the snow in Vermont melted. <laughs> we couldn't change our plans to go back to Colorado. So my friend's family had a grandmother who lived on a lake in Orlando. So we drove the car and towed a boat and went water skiing on the lake in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, where were the global weather freaks <laughs> then you know, that were yelling and screaming? Because, you know, that's a very vast change in weather. Mm -hmm. No snow in Colorado. But, you know, since then they've had record snowfalls in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that just makes me go think you know, all this global warming stuff is just, well, why do they even... I know, it's a grift. I, I know it's a grift, but it just, why do people even buy into it? Because they're stupid. Well, there you have it. I have all the answers today. Yes, you do. Absolutely. It's a grift and they're stupid. It's a grift and they're stupid. I mean, what else can you say? <sighs> there is no other explanation. You really can't. It just makes me, it, oh, it just infuriates me. So that what, going on there, so. what is the, what's that old saying? The most obvious answer is the most obvious answer. Or what is that? You know what I'm saying? There's a name for it. I forget what you call it. I don't know. It's not very obvious what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. But uh, we'll move on. Okay. Well, moving on then. I mean, did you want to talk about more about the weather? No, I just you know saw the, the the rain that they're having out in Northern California, and you know the thing. God bless you, people in Northern California. Uh, you know, you're probably gonna. Uh, because you didn't do, you know, and it was against the law to, you know, do cut brush, brush cutting and all that stuff. And now you probably had fires that have decimated the, the all the structure of the forest. And now you're going to get rain and mudslides because you didn't want to do property management. And I just, God bless those people who, who, you know, suffer from the ineptitude of the California governance. That was my thinking of the whole thing, really. All right. God bless you, people. <laughs> well, do you want to talk about some of uh, President's picks? I mean, well, I, I'll be honest. I'll disclosure right up front. I've not been paying much attention to his latest picks because they're like, blah, whatever. I did read an, a recent article, though, saying that, oh, the Democrats are having hissy fits over his latest picks. I have not seen any of that. Again, I've not been paying attention, but I think these cabinets are so, like, low-level, nobody really cares. I've not seen any kind of outrage. I think uh, the only outrage I saw was his Surgeon General pick, 
where she is definitely pro COVID vaccine. And the only outrage is from the people on the right, which absolutely should be outraged about that pick. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of those ones that's going to come down to uh, internal talks and, you know, we probably won't see anything come from any of that. I don't think, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not, my brain was all focused on the uh, attorney general one. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. We'll see. That's a, that's yours. The, what you're talking about is going to be a push pull. Um, you know, you're going to have Kennedy pushing one way and uh, Nashua pulling the other way. And there's going to be some conflict there, mm -hmm. but I, I, you know, I don't know how much power either one of them is really going to have over the other. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're, you know, I'm not so familiar with it to know if what they're both doing overlaps with each other. Right. So I don't know, but it is, does seem like a conflict of interest. Yeah. When you oh, look at that I, way. yeah. I guess I was just trying to ma mainly focus on the article that I read talking about the Democrats are having come apart meltdowns over the latest cabinet picks. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> I haven't seen anything like that. And nobody even knows who these people are, so whatever. I think it's funny that they're trying to say that, and, and they're really not. I think the most, the funniest one, and I said this before I heard it on the news. I've done that several times in the past couple of weeks, where I've brought up, hey, you know, this happened, and this is, and it's, you know, it's not, not that I'm any smarter, but I've just <laughs> gotten lucky. But I said when they picked... Uh, what's his name is uh, Secretary of State, not Secretary of State, Attorney General. Mm -hmm. Matt Gates. When they picked Matt Gates, I said, mm, "That's not a, that's not right. I don't, I don't know about that pick." And I thought it was a deflection. I thought it was one of those things that we've talked about where uh, we want to move the, the line a mile, so we're going to say. And we're gonna put, we're gonna say we want this line, and it's six miles away. And then, you know, they yell and scream, and we say, ah, "Okay, okay," and we pull it back to the two mile mark, and, mm -hmm. they, and they go, "Okay, that's cool." And we got our mile. But we only wanted a mile, and we actually got <laughs> two miles. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they and they think they won. Right. Okay. Right. So when he picked Gates, Gates, I thought. Yeah, this isn't, you know. It's a ploy. And then. It's a liberal play, from the liberal playbook from themselves. Yes, exactly. And then you said to me, well, who do you think he's going to pick? And mm -hmm. I said, I think it's going to be Bondi from Florida. And sure enough. And sure enough, bam, it was. And if you go look at her qualifications for that position versus his. She's much more qualified. Oh, I'm sure she it. is much more, much qualified, more qualified. But is she going to have the effing backbone to stand up and go in there and clean house? Mm. Probably not. I think she will. I think so. I just wanted something. Sh I wanted a shake up. I wanted a shake up. The people have voted. They have well, let can... their voice be heard. Well, have you watched? And now they're like, oh, no. <laughs> Well, have you watched? And what ask she people did? who don't like Matt Gates. I I yeah. like him. Have you watched what she did in Florida? She did a lot of what's going to happen. Uh, what what your point? What you're asking for? So, I think that I think I I really think that that was a a strategic plan by them. And you know, it's, they're talking about this Matt Gates and his his kerfuffles or whatever you want to call it. With you know, if wow. people looked into it, they would realize. There's, there's probably nothing to it, but you know you're gonna if you're gonna do that, then you got to do the same thing with Pete Hegseth. Yeah, I don't even I, I don't even look at the kerfuffles as you call them. I just look at what what is going to happen with the actual job and the performance I of think, that job. I think the old guard is also still mad at Matt for ousting Kevin McCarthy. Probably so. He needed to go. Probably. What's so. What's wrong with being a firebrand? Probably so. But these people, the old conservatives, I don't even call them conservatives, the old Republicans, they uh they just want they lose their minds over yeah. the, over the change. Yeah. They don't they don't want change. They, they say they do, change. but they don't. No, that is very true. They want to the pearl clutching And I'm not even gonna get into the to the spending part of it where all these senators are 
congressmen are saying, yes, we have to look into spending, spending. And I'm like, well, you better look at yourself. You better look mm -hmm. at your office and you better look at the waste that's in your office. If you're really concerned about it, let's cut the waste from your office as well. Uh, well, you see, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, and we so. want change, but we, we're going to have to do it slow and incremental. Right. We'll we need to, to work with, we need that. to give the Democrats, Democrats we're, we're what gonna, they want so we do, can get what we want. And we're going to have to do a study on that part of it to see if it's feasible. So we'll have to hire some people. To we'll have hearings study. and we'll ask questions, but we're not going to do anything. No, well, absolutely not. F that. By God. I'm sick of it. Right on. For the people. Firebrand. That should be our next. Firebrand. That's going to be our next party form. That's what Call it Firebrand. That's what we're going to do. Anyway, <laughs> you have some news coming up, don't you? I do. What's that? What's my news? I don't know. So, yes, we, look, it's December 8th will be five years of us and me doing this podcast. And I think it's time to wrap it up. Five years is a long Five time. Five years is a good run. We've had yes. a good run. Now, you and I will do our final episode together on December 8th. December the 8th. Yes, that'll be the final episode of Carol Remarks. That's like two weeks away, folks. Yes, but mm -hmm. we're not going completely away. I have started a new podcast, a new project that's more focused on a particular topic, and it will hopefully be a little bit more, more polished and instead of a daily podcast, it will be a weekly podcast. We'll see how long that lasts. But, you know, it's a, it's something different. And, of course, I can be found on Twitter. <laughs> I'm trying to talk the gent into starting his own podcast. So when you do see me on Twitter, subscribe and smash that <laughs> like button. What the hell does smash that I like don't button know. mean? All right. We're, you I push don't push it. Okay, I know. Anyway. I, I hate that, too. Right. It's like melty cheese. Kiro, Kiro 36. Okay, well, we need to move on to the question of the day. Okay, question of the day. Do you want to ask it or do you want me to ask it? You ask it. All right, question of the day. What is on your? What is currently on your nightstand right now? Now. Do you want to answer? You, I'll you answer. Want to, all right, sure, go. I'll answer. Yes, I've got an old-fashioned clock radio, <laughs> a lamp. I've got a big, and I'm going to say it, a big-ass thing full of change. I have a book a gun, and some soap. And you have water. And water, yes. <laughs> but I have a book, a gun. Yes. <laughs> that's for all the criminals that are going to break it through our windows. <laughs> and that's what I have on my white stand. And I love the old-fashioned clock radio. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I don't think anybody has any of those anymore. No, but you know what? I can roll over in the middle of the night and look at it and see, see what, what time, time it is, is by yeah. God. Like, that's to, important, I don't though. have to fumble around for my... <laughs> hey, it is. You can look over there and go, oh, thank God I got two hours more sleep. Or you can look over there and go, son of a bitch, I got five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of fumbling around for your phone and having to push yeah, the button, and, yeah. you know, sometimes... Anyway. All right. There you go. Y'all have a good one. What's on yours? Oh, you know, I don't have a typical nightstand. I'm next to the dresser. That's right. You got the so I, you know, I got a lamp and my medicine and oh, yeah, I got a lamp books too. and stuff. I got a lamp too. You said lamp. Oh, okay, that's it. All right, gotta go. Have a great day. Go dogs. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.